Hey, hey, everyone. This is the Charisma Quotient. I'm your host, Kim Seltzer, a dating and makeover expert, where I will help you build confidence, make connections, and find love from the outside in. I'll date when I have the perfect picture on my profile, but I can't have a perfect picture until I have that perfect outfit. Oh, oh, and by the way, I can't have that perfect outfit until I lose like maybe 10 pounds. And it can go on and on and on, right? Does this sound familiar? That downward spiral of perfection that a lot of us get looped into. But here's the thing. Okay, let's face it. We all... We all want to improve ourselves. We all can be hard on ourselves and think that, you know, we can do something different to make ourselves better. Or maybe we feel that we're not good enough, right? And so we strive for perfection. But sometimes we focus way too much on it, right? So much so that we focus on everything that we don't like or how we can be better. And by centering on this perfection, it prevents you actually from taking action. And you might be missing opportunities in your life. And that's what we're going to talk about today. I call it the waiting for Godot syndrome. If anyone knows that play, it's a it's a play by Samuel Beckett, and it has these two characters. And you just see, it's like this longest play in history, and you just see these two guys waiting for the arrival of this really important person named Godot. But guess what? He never arrives. This great one, this one that's supposed to have all the answers, never comes. And so these two guys waste their whole lives waiting for something that never really comes. So how long do you wait for something? How long do you wait to get that answer, to have the perfect time, to have that perfect body, to have the perfect outfit, for something to arrive? And then you either miss an opportunity because of that waiting, or you just don't do something at all. You know, it's easy to, to succumb to the idea that everything we do has to be perfect. I mean, think about it. It does make sense. And especially if you believe that you're a failure, okay, and people maybe just generally don't like you or that you're basically incapable of doing anything right, then why wouldn't you become a perfectionist? I mean, think about it. It's understandable. It's a response to feeling that you are going to be rejected, that you are lonely, that you're feeling alienated. But there's big problems with this. It's impossible trying to be perfect. It can paralyze you and it makes your life a living hell. And you're operating on an impossible standard. So what I want all of you today to really get here is that you can learn to let go of perfectionism, paralysis as I call it, and create opportunities, not just in your love life, but overall. Because like I always say, what leaks into one area of your life, you're going to find in all the others. So maybe you procrastinate or wait for this perfectionistic moment in your dating life, but where else does that show up? Does that show up at work? Does that show up in friendships where you're literally spinning your wheel or you're, you know, running in that hamster wheel and you're not moving forward? This was really highlighted actually recently. And I, I've been talking to a lot of clients about this effect. I mean, it's very common, but I want to share with you two opposing calls that I had recently. It's just right here on my mind. And I want you to guess as I'm describing these calls on who moved forward and actually got what they wanted and who remained stuck in this perfectionism. Um, these were both what I call breakthrough calls. And for those of you who are not familiar, I offer free break through calls. And this is where we just hop on the phone and we talk about what's working in your life, what's not working. And then we kind of map out where you want to go. And if I can help, I certainly guide you to that. 
Okay, so the first call that I had was with a woman who desperately wanted to start dating again. I mean, she had taken a long break from dating, from being in this long-term relationship. And in fact, she never really dated before. She was hopping from one relationship to the next. And she said, okay, by next spring, I really want to feel confident. I want to have fun. I want to have good dating skills. And I want to have good sorting skills because the sorting had to do with all the men that she had picked in the past were unhealthy ones. And she said, and and by the way, ultimately, I want to be happily married. And I said, great. So what have you been doing thus far in helping you achieve those goals? And she said, well, you know, I'm taking all these online courses and, um, you know, about podcasts and personal development and I'm doing exercises. But you know what? I'm so busy at work. I don't really have time to follow through on the assignments. And, you know, I, I need to create... I need to create more space in my life because I'm just so busy. I said, great. So how have you been working on creating more space so that you can do some of this work? She's like, well, I have this dog. It takes up all this time. So maybe when I get my dog underway, I'll have more time at work. And oh, by the way, she didn't have her online profile up because she was waiting to lose weight and have the picture. It went on and on and on. I know you're probably exhausted listening to this as as she was, you know, and um. I'm listening to her and I I was really trying to help her come to see that she was in this kind of paralysis state of perfectionism and she was waiting for the the perfect moment, the perfect time from doing one thing to the next. But the problem was is she was spinning her wheels and she wasn't getting anywhere. And so I tried to help her see that by working together, by having accountability and the motivation to keep going would really help her get off this hamster wheel. And so she was going to work with me and then she wasn't. And she was wavering so much. Sadly, (laughs) she never ended up working with me. She, she, you know, said, I I, I can't do this. And, And her fear overcame her desire to change. So you can probably guess which woman did not move forward, right? Versus the one that I'm about to tell you. So then about two days later, I have another breakthrough call. Now, it was almost identical case. She wanted to start dating again. She was a relationship person. But there was more of a sense of accomplishment in creating like mini goals for herself and she was starting to find movement. But her issue was that she was scared to death of making the wrong decision. And so she would get somewhere and then like three steps forward and then she would get two steps back because she was scared that she wasn't doing it right. Now, I'm happy to say that that for the first time in her life, I helped her make a decision by hiring me (laughs) on the spot. And I said to her, look, I don't care when you work with me. It could be a year from now, but what would it be like to actually make a decision right here, right now, without thinking about it and actually going with your gut, knowing that you're making the right decision? And after that, I got the numbers on her credit card. And um, I kid you not, That was the beginning of the entire change that she made around this, you know, core issue. And I'm happy to say, yes, she started dating up a storm. She got into a beautiful relationship. She had broke patterns. But more importantly, she changed this part of her life. And no longer does she question her decisions. So, yes, you can learn to let go of this perfectionism paralysis and create new opportunities in your life. Here's the thing, and I know this is going to sound kind of strange, but perfectionism actually serves to protect you. And you may be thinking, well, how, how is that protecting me? Well, I'll tell you. And, and actually, as I was listing these out, I could come up with probably five others, but I would say these are the top five. The first thing is it gives you a sense of control. Think about it. If you're feeling out of control in some aspect of your life, or maybe you have a lot of anxiety or you're uncomfortable, then staying busy in your perfectionism will provide a sense of control, right? So if you are scared to put your online profile up, it's so much easier 
spending time on creating a perfect profile before it goes live. Because once it goes live, well, that's where the fear kicks in, right? So when we feel out of control or anything like that, that perfectionism protects you in that way. Number two, it keeps you from feeling that rejection or not good enough, right? It's an excuse of why things haven't happened too, right? Oh, well, my profile isn't ready yet. So (laughs) that's why I haven't gone out on that date, right? Because you can kind of use that almost as an excuse. Number three, staying indecisive also protects you from being wrong, You know, if you are having, like that last woman that I helped, if you're having difficulties trusting yourself and making that decision, and you're thinking, oh my God, what if I make the wrong choice? It's so much easy deliberating about the choices that you have, right? So that's another way of protecting yourself from being wrong. Number four, it keeps you from being satisfied with anything that you can accomplish. Now, that one probably sounds strange to you. However, if you're so used to being dissatisfied and if you don't accomplish anything, that in a way is almost safer for you because it's a known entity. It's something that you recognize, that you're familiar with. But what if you actually accomplished something? I know it's going to feel uncomfortable, but you have to get uncomfortable in order to change. Otherwise, you're staying the same. So that's the number five is that you remain stuck. If you are in one place and you never move, and if you never move, guess what? You won't fail. So the freezing is actually a form of the fear of failure. So There's a pattern here, right, with perfectionism. I mean, think about it. All of this has to do with fear, and it protects you in some ways. And look, I'm not necessarily saying that this is wrong. I think it can serve you, and especially if you have a big life decision or you've been hurt before, taking your time and doing things different is okay. But when it's done in, it's, you know, just excess and over a long period of time, and you know that it's keeping you stuck, that's where it becomes problematic. But you can learn to let go of this stuff, okay? This is important because if you don't, you know, center everything on being perfect and it prevents you from taking action, you might be missing all these beautiful opportunities in your life. Like I know, and just again, I always refer to my own life with this. I know that there's been times in my life where I had stayed stuck in that perfectionism. I mean, even when I think about when I was this single mom getting back out there, I had to recreate my entire career. I can't tell you how long it took me to get up my first website, for instance. And, you know, it really, now that I think back on it, (laughs) that website was laughable. Like it was back in, I don't know, 2007. And it was like when the websites just looked different. But I spent so many months and hours getting like the fonts and the colors and everything just perfect. And the sad part of it all is it doesn't even exist any longer. So what what I thought was so important back then isn't even important now. And that's what I want you all to get is that whatever decision you make and whatever you try is right for you at this time. You know, I know what you're thinking. Like, you're probably thinking, well, isn't it good to strive for being better than you are, improving your life, working hard at something? Yes. But when it's done in excess, where you spend all your energy, hours, and soul living in this perfection, you're not creating change. You're only spinning the hamster wheel or running on that treadmill, and you're not moving forward. So, Let's go over now. Hopefully I kind of hammered in like why this is happening. Right. And, and I won't even go into the deeper stuff. And that is 
where this comes from, because usually you can trace this back to other things in your life, right? Maybe it's your upbringing. Maybe it's, you know, something that happened to you, but I don't want to go into that. What I really want to go into is how can you move past this? How can you move forward? So here's how you can escape the hell of perfectionistic paralysis. Number one, perfection is actually imperfection. Accept whatever you do will be imperfect. Because once you accept that you will make a mistake and it, there may be fear and it's scary and all that, it becomes easier. Look, all the leaders of the world, people who have amazing relationships in their life, people who are millionaires, they've all failed. They all made mistakes. And actually, that's what made them stronger. That's what pushed them into success and relationships and business and love and, and all of that. Making a mistake is inevitable. There is no way around it. But when you're able to accept that you know, you won't ever do anything perfectly. You can start from that place and then tasks become a little bit easier. So at the very least, you're operating within a paradigm that's more in touch with the actual reality. I mean, that's life. You're human. I'm sorry. The last time I checked, you're human. We all are. Okay. So that's number one. Number two, no, nothing is forever. Nothing is permanent. Okay. I just got off the uh, phone with a client actually yesterday and it made me think of this because she was trying to decide on a different career, right? And she had five options and she was so organized and she wrote out like a vision board and all the advantages and disadvantages to all these, you know, ways that she wanted to go. And I said, you know, what if you just picked one? Couldn't you just change it maybe in a year if you didn't like it? And she's like, oh, I, I, well, I guess I, I can. She's like, yeah, but you know, I'm just scared of making the wrong decision. I said, there's no decision that's going to be wrong and nothing is permanent because whatever you make at the time is actually going to help you get to where you want to go. Um, <laughs> I'll use a funny example. When I got married, this is a funny thing for anyone who's thinking about like, who is going, who are going to be my bridesmaids, right? At that time, now I was really young. I was in my twenties and I thought this was the biggest decision I had to make. I had to have the perfect wedding party, right? So I picked out eight beautiful bridesmaids and they were all my best friends and from different walks of life. And, but it was a big decision. And I was really hoping that everyone, you know, looked perfect with their perfect dresses and all of that stuff. Oh my God, like I found the pictures of those girls. Now, mind you, I'm still friends with some of them, but some of them, I didn't even know who they were. I'm like, who is that girl? At the time, they were the most important person or people in my life. And so it wasn't the wrong decision. It was perfect at the time. But looking back, I, it, it, my life has completely changed now, right? So nothing's permanent. That's that, that's called evolution. That's growing. So you're not going to make the wrong decision. You're going to know that it's right for you at the time and that may change. Okay. Number three, start small. I mean, this is like 101 stuff, but sometimes we make it harder than it is. So many of us, especially when we're perfectionistic, we try to overshoot our goals, right? So we'll say, I want the moon. I want to get married. I want the white picket fence. But everyone loses sight sometimes of what you need to do in order to get there, right? So don't overshoot the goals. Instead, build and layer small things that you can accomplish to give you the confidence. And then guess what? That'll help you trust yourself. Because if you, like, think about it, if you start with the easiest thing, say, on your list, and you accomplish that, and you feel pumped up, you're like, oh my gosh, I accomplished that. So that gives you the confidence to keep going. And then that will help you learn to trust yourself. So start small. The small wins add up to the bigger picture, the bigger win. All right, number four, 
reward yourself. Reward yourself for staying on task. You know, like how many of you actually, you know, a lot, and this is something that I see a lot of like perfectionistic people do, is that they won't give themselves breaks. Like they they want to work on something and then they'll be hyper-focused on that and they'll spend hours and hours and hours and hours. Instead, take regular breaks. Okay. And then reward yourself. So like, for instance, what I do often, like, let's say I'm working on a project, I'll work for 30 minutes and then I'll say, okay, when I'm done in that 30 minutes, I'm going to take a 15 minute coffee break and I reward myself with coffee and I won't give myself coffee until now the reward has to obviously be something that's rewarding. If you hate coffee, okay, obviously it's not going to be a reward. So think of like different things that you like that you can do for yourself. And, you know, as long as it's something pleasant, you can look forward to it. And that work break reward system sets up the positive feedback loop in your brain. And it makes makes things more manageable. And you won't be so perfectionistic about, you know, the, the whole big picture. The other thing that I find interesting about this whole thing on rewards is it's also something that can be very validating when someone else rewards you. And I see this to be true with so many of my clients. You know, they'll be, let's say they're, and I keep using the online profile as an example because I think it's something easy and tangible to talk about. So for instance, a woman who's scared about putting her profile up because they're scammers and you know, horrible people online. So she's scared to death to just put that one picture up. And so if, you know, I'll tell people like that, well, you know, there's horrible people everywhere, even in law, you know, in life. So there are people like that offline and, and online. So what if you just put one picture up and put a couple lines and don't have your profile be perfect and just see what happens. Let's just do an experiment. And guess what? That first guy who IMs her and says, hey, nice picture. You look beautiful. Boom. That reward of that compliment gives her the confidence to put another picture up and to perhaps keep trying, right? And so this is all based on experience. If you don't move forward and put yourself out there and take action and instead spinning your wheels in this perfectionistic loop, you'll never get rewarded either. So do something that gives you that reward. Okay, so that was number four. Number five, get out of your head. Get out of your head and just do it. Oh my God. Sometimes just reading too much, listening too much. Look, I mean, here I am on my podcast, say don't keep listening to podcasts. Of course, listen to podcasts, but then do the things I'm telling you or call me up and hire me or, you know, whatever it is, take action. Because if you have all these facts and theories swimming in your head and you're forgetting actually to live in the moment, do something, have fun, you know all that you need to know. So it's time to take action and move past these fears and obstacles that are holding you back. I had a, um, a client who I worked with and when I, it, this is a male client. And when he came to me, he said, well, look, you know, I just want you to know I've worked with so-and-so I've worked with this one and that one. I've read this book. I've done that book. And I said, look, if you're going to work with me, I need for you to take all the books and all the things that you've learned from other people and I want you to put them in a box and I want you to put it under the bed. I said, I feel like you are in such a like perfectionistic paralysis state of all your facts that you haven't implemented any of this. You just have all these things swimming in your head and you just kind of froze and looked at me. And so I said, if you're on my watch, you're going to just do what I say. And I don't want you to really think about it. I just want you to do it. And he took off running with it. And you know what? It was the best thing he could have done. It really helped him stay focused, put him into action, started dating up a storm and eventually got married. So yes, this can all happen to you. So just to recap, because I know I talked a lot here in these tips. So number one, Perfection is imperfection. It's never going to be perfect, so just do it. Number two, no, nothing is forever. It's not permanent. Just try something. You'll still learn from it. 
Number three, start small. Don't overshoot your goals. Number four, reward yourself for the task or actually, you know, get compliments or have other people reward you so that you get validation and confidence to move forward. And number five, get out of your head and get into the world. Okay, so now, of course, it's time for the portion where I read a letter and hopefully help you as well as this person who wrote in. This is from Patty, and she says, Hi, Kim. I'm completely frozen. I have been single for over a year now, and I haven't gone on one date. I I know, pretty pathetic. But honestly, I hate the way my body looks, and I don't like putting myself out there at all. I hate taking pictures for my profile because, honestly, I'd rather just wait until I lose weight. The problem is I haven't done anything to lose the weight because the loneliness is causing me to eat, and I don't feel like exercising. I'm not sure how I can get out of this funk. I want my body and my mindset to be better before doing anything with men. Can you help me, Patty? Oh, Patty, I I so feel the rabbit hole that you're heading down, and I know you're not alone. I, and so thank you for writing in. It's, it's hard to motivate yourself, right, when nothing is pushing you. But that's just it. And there lies within the problem. You are waiting for someone, something, to push you or to tell you to lose the weight or exercise or whatever that is. You're waiting for Godot. And that Godot is your excuse for not moving forward because I feel like you have a fundamental fear of it all. Maybe it's a fear of rejection. Maybe it's a fear of failure. Maybe it's a fear that someone won't like you for the way that your body is. Whatever that is, it's keeping you stuck. What if I told you, though, that it's actually the opposite of what you think? Like, what if you knew that actually exercise would release endorphins that would counteract the depression and (laughs) help you lose the weight? You're thinking, oh, well, I'm lonely, so I'm, I'm eating, and then I don't feel like exercising. Flip it. Flip it. Waiting is just a stall tactic. It's a stall tactic laced in fear. So I guess that would be the first thing to ask yourself is, number one, what are you fearing if you did lose weight? What are you fearing if you actually lost the weight and then you didn't have the excuse for the picture for your profile? Then what would be the next excuse? Would it be the dress? Would it be the photographer? Would it be that you can't afford the online profile? Think about your fears, list them out and see how you can, you know, get past it. Number two, try one of the tips I just said earlier about, you know, breaking down your goals into smaller chunks and then rewarding yourself. You know, start small. Don't say, oh my God, I have to exercise five to seven times a day in order to really be effective. You'll never, you'll never accomplish that. And so what happens is that if you're overthinking that goal, you will stay stuck because you feel like you can't accomplish it. Accomplish it. So instead, I want you to try exercising two times a week instead of five to seven. And instead of an hour, try 30 minutes. Isn't that more manageable? Or, and also, what if you reward yourself? right? So come up with a list of all kinds of rewards that, you know, that you look forward to. Maybe it's a mani-pedi, maybe it's a massage, you know, something that you're excited to do. So if you exercise maybe three times that week, you reward yourself at the end of the week with that massage. You know, we all have to do things to almost like trick ourselves, to motivate ourselves, and we can't always rely on the outside world, on Godot, right? Number three, love your body right now. Don't wait to love your body. Look in the mirror. Pick out your top three or or more favorite parts of your body. Instead of focusing on what you hate and what you don't like and what you're sad about, pick out outfits that showcase your best assets and flaunt it like no one else. And so then you can start feeling more body confident. This is what I do all the time when I go shopping with people. I can't tell you how many times, 
you know, women are just feeling awful about their body. They're nitpicking, you know, this lump and that lump. And, you know, instead of really seeing all the beautiful parts of them. And when I get clothes that actually showcase those beautiful parts, your confidence will soar. You'll see yourself differently. And that is going to help you motivate. And number four, take action. Put up a picture in one of the apps. Go on one date in one month, you know, start small and just do it. And if you're like Patty and you're paralyzed and waiting for that moment, try some of these tips. I know that perfection is imperfection. You're okay just the way you are. And if you let go of all this perfectionism, you will let go of this like paralysis state that you're in and start creating opportunities in your life. So thanks for joining me today. This has been the Charisma Quotient. I'm your host, Kim Seltzer. And remember, you can build confidence, make connections, and find love from the outside in. And if you want to experience one of those free breakthrough calls I talked about in the beginning with me personally and help you get past some of your perfection paralysis, click the link in the show description where you can continue this conversation of cracking this pattern and finally getting a handle on this part of your life. Stop living in fear. You deserve to find love. So stay tuned until next week with more tips on how to feel and look fabulous every day.